For the moment, shifting focus to France, which continues to spar with its allies, two countries in particular, the United Kingdom and Australia. For the last two months, both of them have been at the receiving end of some serious French fury. The rift is now widening. How did it begin in the first place? With the formation of AUKUS. It's a trilateral security alliance between Australia, the United Kingdom and the United States. A-U-K-U-S. That's AUKUS for you. The alliance was formed, or rather announced in September. Before this, Australia was to buy submarines from France. That was the plan. It was a deal worth $66 billion. But after AUKUS, Australia scrapped that deal with France. It said it would buy those submarines, not from France, but from the US. Of course, France was upset. It accused Australia of stabbing it in the back. It recalled its ambassador from Australia. Diplomatic ties between Paris and Canberra have been in the deep freeze since. Now, over the weekend, the French president took aim at Australia once again. He accused the Australian prime minister of lying. This happened in Rome. At the recently concluded G20 summit, a group of Australian journalists approached the French president and they asked him to reflect on the submarine scuffle. He joined them for, for an impromptu chat. And what did he say? Well, quite a lot. He said, France has a lot of respect for Australia, that it shares a lot of values with Australia, but Australia has not really reciprocated. It hasn't been consistent in its values. This is when a reporter asked Macron if he thinks that Scott Morrison lied to him about the submarine deal. You have to watch the response. I have a lot of respect for your country. I have a lot of respect and a lot of friendship for your people. I just say when, you, when we have respect, you have to be true and you have to behave in line and consistently with this value. Do you think he lied to you? I don't think. I know. I don't think I know. The conviction with which Macron said this is reflective of the decaying ties between the two countries. The President of France openly called the Prime Minister of Australia a liar. Such public display of displeasure is rare among world leaders. This was an extraordinary charge in diplomatic terms. And by the way, Macron did not stop there. He went on to accuse Scott Morrison of disrespecting Australia's allies and taking actions that are detrimental not just to the Prime Minister's reputation, but of the entire country. And to make himself absolutely clear, he said all of this in English, not French. Your country was shoulder to shoulder with us during the wars. You, were, you had fighters with us when our freedom was at stake. We, have, we do have the same value. So I think we are, I mean, we have to honor this common past and these common values. But I think you can have disagreements. I do respect sovereign choices, but you have to respect uh, allies and partners, and it was not the case with this deal. And I think this is detrimental to and, the reputation of you your country and your country. You well, he certainly did not beat around the bush. He did not sugarcoat things. He put it very bluntly that he no longer trusts Scott Morrison. Is the feeling mutual, though? The answer is no. Australia wants to patch up. It wants France to get over what happened and move on. At the same time, it also says that it has no regrets. It says it did not steal an island or deface the Eiffel Tower. All it did was get out of a contract. Listen, listen to the statement by Australia's Deputy Prime Minister, Barnaby Joyce. There were stories that were being floating around the paper long before the cancellation of the submarine contract. And that's a really important word, it was a contract. We didn't steal an island, we didn't deface the Eiffel Tower, um, it was a contract. And contracts have terms and conditions, and one of those terms and conditions and propositions is that you might get out of the contract. You got out of that contract. And, uh, you know, I understand, I understand the sentiment, I understand uh, the views of the French people, and I'm certain that uh, with time, like all things, uh, we can get over this and move on. Get over this and move on, he says. We did not deface the Eiffel Tower. It sounds like a high school spat, except that it's serious. Australia terminated a deal with France, only to sign another one with the United States, making Macron lose face in an election year. Obviously, he's upset. France will head to polls in April 2022. Macron's prospects of winning look slim. Is he picking fights then on purpose? Yes, says the United Kingdom. 
The Brits too are engaged in a tussle with the French. This one's over fishing rights. France is seizing British trawlers that are entering its territorial waters. And this tussle, by the way, began right after Brexit. Britain saw, sought greater access to fishing waters. France, along with the European Union, objected. They began debating on how much access the UK should be granted. The debate remained unresolved, but after the formation of the AUKUS, it turned into a dispute. France started blocking British boats. Some of its ports also denied them access. And this has been happening for weeks now. So Britain has now issued an ultimatum. It has asked France to back down or face legal action against the, under the Brexit trade deal. The British Foreign Minister says the French are behaving unfairly and they need to mend their ways in the next 48 hours. She also suggested that Macron's actions might have something to do with next year's presidential election in France. Well, they may or may not, but Macron has been unrelenting. And he had a win this weekend. He extracted a public apology from the President of the United States. I think uh, what happened uh, was to use an uh, English phrase, what we did was clumsy. It was not done with a lot of grace. I was under the impression certain things had happened that hadn't happened. And, uh, but uh, I want to make it clear, France is an extreme, extremely valued partner. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.